Hi everyone and welcome to this video tutorial where we're going to be taking a look at getting started with Microsoft Teams. Now Teams is a persistent chat-based collaboration platform and it's really a hub for teamwork. So you can create private or public teams, you can chat amongst your team, you can share documents or even host online audio or video meetings as well as many more facilities that are available within the application. And these days it's really important that teams do have a shared workspace as it makes it a lot easier for them to collaborate, communicate and also make really key decisions. And it's particularly useful for larger organizations that might have employees not all located in the same location. Maybe they have employees spread all across the world working remotely. Teams is great for keeping people connected. So in this video tutorial, all we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the basics. If you've never used Teams before, then you might find this quite useful. We're going to open up the application. I'm going to show you how you can download the desktop application. We're going to take a look at the different parts of Teams and how you can navigate around the main Teams dashboard. And then we're going to start out with the basics. I'm going to show you how you can create your own team and also invite other people to join your team. So with all that said, let's get started. Now Teams is available as part of the Microsoft 365 Business, Business Premium and Enterprise plans. So if your organization has one of those plans, then the good news is that Teams is included along with your subscription. So all you need to do is to sign into Microsoft 365 or Office 365 as it was previously known. So you can see here I've opened a web browser. I've just gone to office.com and it's now asking me to sign in. Now I've been signed into here before, so it's saying sign in and then it has my email address. So I'm going to click sign in. It's got my password pre-populated and I'm going to say sign in. And this is going to take me into my Microsoft 365 dashboard. And this is kind of where I can access all of the different applications that are available within Microsoft 365. And you'll see there right in the middle where we have all of our icons, one of them that I have access to is Teams. So let's click on that. So Teams opens in a new web browser and you can see here I'm being asked if I want to get the Windows app. So one thing you need to understand about Teams is that you can access it online through a browser as we're about to do here, but you can also download the desktop version. And I will say the difference between the online version and the desktop version is not a great deal. You have a couple of extra little things in the desktop version, but essentially it's pretty much exactly the same. Now, I'm not going to get the Windows app at the moment. I'm going to say use the web app instead. So I'm now in the Teams dashboard. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through and highlight some of the different areas of the screen so you get more of an idea as to where everything is stored. So let's start on the left hand side. This is your main menu area and this is where you can come to access the main parts of Teams. So you can see we have an area where we can see all of our activity. We have a chat area. We have a team section that we're clicked on currently. We have a calendar. We have a calls area and also a files area as well. And then right at the bottom, we have an icon which will allow us to access different apps that we can use to extend the capabilities of teams. And then finally, we have a help icon for training topics. Then right at the bottom there, we have a little icon that will allow us to download the desktop app. So if that is something that you want to do, once you've logged into Teams online, you can come in here and you can then download the desktop version of Teams. And you can see that I actually have the desktop version of Teams downloaded. I've got it here in my status bar. If I click to open it, just so you can see what that looks like you can see that it actually looks pretty much the same as the online version that we were just looking at. Now, next we have this big Teams pane. So I'm currently clicked on Teams. You can see that it's highlighted with that blue line down the side. And this is where you'll see any Teams that you've created or Teams that you're a member of, and also any associated channels. 
Now I kind of think of channels as a bit like subfolders. You can see here under Northwind Traders, which is the team, we have three channels, general, marketing and sales pitch. And channels really allow you to organize your conversation. So if there's a lot of members of the Northwind Traders team, we want to make sure that all of the conversations that are going on with that team are somewhat organized. So if certain members of the team want to talk about marketing, they have a specific channel that they can do that in. So this is where you'll see your teams and you'll also see that all of your teams have three dots next to them for more options. And that allows you to carry out certain administration tasks with regards to your team. Finally, at the bottom, we have this little link that says join or create a team. Now we are actually going to create a team in this video. So we're going to come back to that in a moment. Running across the top of the screen, we have our search bar. So this is where you can come in and you can search for different keywords. So if I type in the word sales, for example, and hit enter, it's going to show me any messages that contain that keyword, any people that contain that keyword or any files that contain that keyword as well. Another cool thing about this search bar at the top is that if you type in a slash, it's going to give you, it's going to give you shortcut commands that can help you perform certain tasks very quickly. So for example, if I wanted to set my status to away, if I type in slash away and hit enter, you can see now if you look at my profile photo, I now have my little away icon set. So typing in that slash command is a great way of accessing those quick commands. Also, you can type in the at symbol. And again, you'll get some quick commands for accessing certain applications within Teams. So a really useful little area at the top there. Right over on the right hand side, you have your profile. So if you click on your picture, this is going to allow you to do things like uh, change your picture. You can set your status to available, busy, do not disturb. You can also access any messages that you've saved from here. And you can also jump into your settings and make sure that everything is set up as you would like. Now, the main bulk of the screen is made up of this conversations area. So I'm currently clicked in the Northwind Traders marketing channel, and you can see that there's been a conversation going on within this channel. And that is what I'm seeing in the middle of the screen there. If I want to start a new conversation, I have that option at the bottom. This little blank field is where I can type a message and send that straight through. I also have icons underneath, which are going to allow me to format my message, add attachments. I can also add fun things so I can liven up my messages using things like emojis, GIFs, stickers and memes as well. So lots of different conversation options will appear underneath where you type in your messages. And finally, if you want to get back to Microsoft 365 at any point, if you go all the way up into the top left hand corner, click on the application launcher and you can choose to jump to Office 365 or you can jump to any one of your other applications. So that's a very brief rundown of how you navigate around Teams. Now, I want to spend the rest of this introductory video just showing you the basics of creating a brand new team. And if you remember at the beginning, I showed you that we have a link at the bottom here underneath where we have all of our teams listed that says join or create a team. So let's click it. Now I've got two options I can select. I can create a team or I can join a team using a code. Now at the moment I want to create a team. So I'm going to select this first option. I then get a choice of building a team from scratch or creating a team from an existing Office 365 group. Now, again, if you're not familiar with Office 365 groups, that's definitely something for you to look up. But essentially, an Office 365 group is something that you can create within Outlook. You can invite people to that group and it works in kind of a similar way. So if you already have an Office 365 group set up in your Outlook and that group has team members, if you wanted to essentially create something similar in Teams, you could say create from an existing Office 365 group or team. And it really just quickens up the process for you. 
because anybody who's already a member of the Office 365 group will automatically become a member of the Microsoft team. Now, we're not going to do that. We're going to build a team from scratch. You then get to choose what kind of team this will be. And there are three options. You can create a private team, which means that people need permission to join. You can create a public team so anyone in your organization can join. And both private and public will require you to approve any join requests. The final option, the org wide team, is a team where everybody in your organization automatically joins. So there's no requesting to join the team. Everybody is automatically part of that team. Now, in this example, we're going to create a public team. And we then get to give our team a name. So I'm going to call this one the Western Trading Company. I can type into here a description for my team for the sake of speed in this tutorial. I'm going to leave that blank for now and I'm just going to say create. And Microsoft Teams is going away. It's going to create that team for me. And now it's asking me if I want to add any members. Now I can add members at this stage. That's perfectly fine. If I maybe wanted to skip this step and add members to the team at a later date, I can definitely do that as well by just using the skip button at the bottom. But I'm going to invite a couple of people. Let's invite Ben. I'm going to invite Ryan. And I'm also going to invite Vicky. And I'm going to say add. And you can see that by default, all of these people have been given member access to this team. So owner is the highest level. And if you create a team, you're automatically the owner of that team. And when you add members, they will be members by default unless you bump up their access to owner. You can also invite external members to the team and they will essentially be guest members. Now, at this stage, I'm going to keep the team to just the four of us and I'm going to say close. So now if I look through all of my teams, I'm going to collapse up some of these because I've got quite a few teams going on now. You'll see at the bottom there, I have the Western Trading Company. And by default, when you do create a new team, you will see that this general channel is automatically created. You can, of course, add more of your own channels. That's absolutely fine. But you will always have a general channel when you create a new team. So super simple to create a team and add new members. If I now decided at this stage that I wanted to add some more people to that team, if I click the three dots next to the team, I have an add member option and I can just go and I can start to add more people in. So a very simple process. Now, if somebody invites you to join a team, you will be notified of that. And depending how you have your notification settings, you may receive a banner pop up in the corner or you may just see it appear in your activity feed. So you can see here at the top, it says Ben added you to the Western Trading Company. And as soon as you've been added to a team, that team is going to appear in your teams list. Now, if you do set up a team, and that's a public team, you might get people requesting to join that team from all over the place. And because with public teams and private teams, you have to actually approve the join requests, that can be quite time consuming. So a way to get around that, a way where you don't actually have to go in and approve all of the requests, is to send out a team code which people can use to join your team. And that kind of bypasses the whole approval process. So maybe you have a group of 10 people that you want to invite to this team. It's good to grab the team code, pop it into an email, send it out to them. Then they can join that team. Then you don't have to approve their join request. So let's take a look at where you get the team code from. I'm going to jump back to teams. I'm going to go to Western Trading Company, click the three dots, and we're going to go to the manage team option. Now, under here, you can see all of the people that are currently part of that team and you can see all the people that I've added. But if we jump across to the settings tab at the top here, you'll see that one of the sections is team code. So I'm just going to expand that and it says share this code so people can join the team directly and you won't get any join requests, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to say generate 
And there I have my team code, which I could then choose to copy, paste it into an email and send it out to the people I'd like to invite to the team. So that is it. Now we have just scratched the surface of Teams. The idea of this video is really just to get you familiar with some of the different sections and also show you that very first step of creating your own team, adding members, and also how you deal with join requests. But for now, that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.